of the people watching my videos probably know me for my electromagnetic coil rifle. But my original electromagnetic obsession was to make motors. I spent a couple years making progressively better motors. The last motor I finished was this. This was my first three-phase brushless motor. The one thing that I was having trouble with, though, was the speed controller. The speed controller just controls the timing and polarity of each of the coils in the stator to get the rotor to rotate. Since a three-phase motor has either three coils or three groups of coils, the speed controller has to create three separate phases of AC using three MOSFET half bridges. The phase angle of the three phases controls the direction of the motor, and the duty cycle of the phases controls the power of the motor. And the frequency and timing of the phases must match the frequency of the motor exactly in order to drive it. So we're asking a lot of, of our circuit to just control a motor. This hat makes my head look so big. Hmm. What if I wore it like this? In West Philadelphia, Without being overly knowledgeable about electronics at the time that I made my last motor, uh, the best circuit I could come up with was this. This circuit forgoes the ability to throttle the motor or reverse the direction. It just times the firing of the half bridges to be at the same frequency as the motor rotation. This means as soon as it gets power, it pushes the motor to full throttle in a single direction, which means it's not any better than using a brushed DC motor. On top of all that, it has three major flaws. Firstly, it doesn't use MOSFET drivers, so the MOSFETs are being turned on and off slowly to, and generate a lot of heat. Secondly, it uses different FETs for the high and low side of the half bridge. So they have different ratings and perform differently. Lastly, it controls the two MOSFETs of each half bridge with a common gate. This means that every time the half bridge switches from low to high or vice versa, there's a window of time where both MOSFETs are on and they transconduct. This means that a lot of current flows through the MOSFETs and not through the motor. This causes them to generate a lot of additional heat and causes them to fail pretty frequently. So, I came up with this. TSE can throttle and reverse the motor, and it's also capable of braking or coasting. It is a censored ESC, and while most people seem to prefer sensorless ESCs, censored ones offer better control at low motor speeds. This ESC utilizes analog circuitry and optical sensors to generate the three phases of AC for driving the motor. It has an ATtiny85 that can invert the sensor signals to reverse the motor and also supply a PWM signal to the MOSFET drivers to control motor power. Using analog circuitry frees up the ATtiny from directly driving the three phases and requires that it only babysit the analog circuitry. This means that it can instead do other things. For instance, it can monitor the motor RPM versus a desired RPM, so it can maintain speed under varying load conditions. The ATtiny is also freed up to send or receive serial data for controlling a screen or talking to a master device. Another improvement is that the ESC utilizes bootstrapping and includes a dead time when switching phases. This eliminates the need for different MOSFETs and eliminates transconductance of any kind, so the MOSFETs produce almost no heat. That last change in particular means that this ESC can power tremendously powerful motors. The MOSFETs are rated for 60 amps and 55 volts. That means it could feasibly drive a 3 kilowatt motor. Now, the motor I'm testing here is not the most optimized thing ever. It generates at most 100 watts. I've learned a lot since I've made it and need to build something that can actually utilize the power of the new ESC. So here's a sneak peek at a future design of mine. This will be my eighth motor and is an entirely new axial flux design. This motor will feature custom magnets and an improved ferrite core and will feature several machined carbon fiber and metallic parts.
As you can see, it's pretty small. I'd like for it to have the power to weight ratio necessary to power a plane. Now, I'm working hard to finish this, but uh, I got a lot of projects up in the air and I'm also busy at work. But I'll keep you guys updated with any progress that I make on it. So, uh, till then, have a good day.